show you how to actually uh, use a reactive form to display selected record and allow for editing and submission of the form. Um, at this point, let's just check where we are. Um, so we have an error in our template. I'm going to, if you're joining for the first time, please remember to subscribe. Okay, this open edit is a function that's going to execute when a user clicks on the open button, right? So this function, we've not written it. So this function is not written already. Um, so what we can do is to come to open details. Um, actually copy, uh, copy the open details and like this, we can copy this open detail and change it to open edit. And it's simply going to also display an empty form. But remember, this we are talking about now, we are talking about a reactive form. So it's going to be open a bit. All right. So if I save everything using command S and I come back here, I think I should refresh this page. Um, why? I have an error says uh, private and only as uh, edit form is private. Let's see. So let's scroll up. Um, Okay, so we are simply going to remove this private from here so that it will be available in the HTML. So I'm going to save everything. And at this point, if I click on edit, nothing happens. Let's see. Open edit target model friend friend. Um, permit me to take out this for now. Okay. Um, target model friend friend. Okay, so I'm gonna save everything and then I'm gonna click on edit. It should be able to display because let's see. Oh, we've not written, we've not actually written. Wow, well, why do we have this error? Create field, edit form. It's already done. Okay, so let's get back here. Um. We've not actually uh, uh, written the uh, the code for the button in the table. So I made a mistake and simply add, added this code here. So this code will not be here. But here we need to add the code that actually saves the item, okay? So this very click event is going to be in the in the button, in the edit button, right in the table, okay? So if I go to the table right here in the edit button, so this is where we are gonna have the click event, it's gonna be right here, I'm gonna paste, uh, what happens? Command Y, okay, Command V, uh, okay, I think I screwed up something. Uh, okay, let's get back here. So this is a function we are trying to use. So I'm going to copy it. So it's actually going to be on the edit button right in the table. So I'm going up back up to where I have the table and this edit button right here is going to contain this click event. So I'm going to say Command V. Okay, perfect. So at this point, if I save everything and hopefully everything's saved and I go to edit at this point, it should display. Okay, good. Good. So we have this update frame, as you can see. And for now, nothing is filled on it. Nothing is in there. All right. So the next thing we want to do is to go to this file. Now, when the user, uh, this, when this form displays on the screen, like here, this model displays, at this point, in this path, we need to, we need to populate this form, uh, this, this reactive form with this record that was passed in, all right? Uh, to do that is also very simple. So you use patch value. You use a function, a static function called patch value of the form. 
of variables. So you're going to say this dot at the form dot patch value, and then open and close here, put a semicolon here. And at this point, I would like to uh, now assign values to the controls in this way id friend.id, uh, first name. So the friend, that first name, last name, friend, dot, dot last name, uh, the department, it's going to be friend, dot, dot, department, uh, email, it's going to be friend, dot, email, and country, it's going to be friend, dot, country. So once you use patch value in this way, it's going to simply assign. Remember, we are not we are not using what we used before document that get element by ID. You can actually use it, but in this case, we are using reactive form. So this is how you bind the content of the control to the form. It's a two-way binding, and this is going to work perfectly well. So I'm going to use command S to save everything, and I will go back just to check. So edit. And you can see everything is bound correctly. But when we click on save changes, nothing actually happens at this point. I think it's better we just complete this at once. Uh, so I'm going to go on to the next part. So let's see how we can actually save this item. So I think it should be very simple. The save endpoint, as I mentioned, the save endpoint from the API uh, the save endpoint for the API is like this. The edit endpoint slash frame slash ID uh, slash edit, All right? So that's what we have here. You can, everything about this application I'm, I'm working on is on this website. You can follow all, this, all the instructions. All right, so let's now go back to the HTML component and we want in such a way that for the edits right here, so in one second, just copy and paste here. Uh, when the user clicks on save changes here, I the user clicks on save changes is going to run a function called on save. Okay, perfect. We've not written this function yet. This function is basically about the same like the post function and the the the, the other function we wrote, which is uh get so we are going to go here and write a function called on save so we're gonna say on save uh again is going to take give me one second so on save is going to take two items uh give me one second oh now uh, you need to know that when when on save is called uh it will simply not need any parameter at all but when it runs it has to close the model so let's go back to this place all right so when on save is for is called we are talking about reactive form and uh, we specify the edit url const edit url is equal to um i'm actually going to copy from here and then adjust it. All right, so, all right, this is what we have. So we have uh, friends, see, slash ID slash edit, right? Slash ID, you can see here, slash edit. Okay, so we are going to now uh, 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 concatenate with the selected ID, which is uh, this dot edit form dot ID. Uh, this dot edit form dot ID. Okay, don't know why it's giving me this error message. Plus uh, slash edit. Okay. Okay, so uh, IDs invalid. I know where the problem is coming from. So put a semicolon here first. So let's just go up to correct it. So when I was building, I think it should be 
uh, these dots a bit form that ID so it should be correct oh okay so you're gonna say that value dot ID perfectly well all right so now we are going to make a put request. We are going to make a put request. Make no mistake about it. It's going to be a put request. I'm going to go down. So I'm going to say this dot HTTP client dot put and specify the URL, the edit URL, and now specify the form you want to uh, that contains the value that is being modified. So that this form dot value. Remember, in the case of template driven form, we said f dot value. In this case is going to be a date form that value dot subscribe and now we need to specify uh, what is going to happen when uh let's go on a second we, we need to now put a dit url the subscribe okay and we second we just place here so inside this subscribe we need to specify what happens when the, uh, the the data comes back in a, in a synchronous manner so we want the results in this case there is no results coming back so it's saying results it's going to be a lambda expression uh it's going to be a lambda expression like this okay perfect and we need to then specify once this function is executed and uh, I, the update is made, it's going to simply refresh the page. We're saying this dot uh, ng on init refresh, and finally this dot model service dot dismiss all. So dismiss all models. That's fine. All right, I think we've come a long way. So let me just take out this wiggly red lines everywhere. So I'm going to save everything and let's test it out to see what we have. Um, so let's go back here. So I'm going to kind of change my own name, right? So I'm going to change my own name. Instead of last name Kainton uh, Munonye, I'm going to change it to Kainton the Tech Pro. I'm going to click on save. Nothing happens. <laughs> Sometimes there must always be one error in your application and you have to debug. Uh, say server respond date with an error. Uh, I'm gonna come here and just fail type Java string require Java integer da 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 da. Okay. Add new one. Okay. Uh, okay. So I think I know where the problem is coming from. It's coming from the way I concatenated the string, the URL uh, string. So if I get back here, you can see add new should be like this. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna save everything. So I'm going to change my name. My surname now is going to be Kinton the Tech Pro. I'm gonna say save changes. Wow. This is not happening. Um, let's see. I'm going to go to inspect. Now you need to also learn how to debug. Add new slash. Oh, it's going to add new, add new. So instead of to go to add new, is going to go to uh, friends ID edit. Okay, so let's go correct it. So these are small things you need to know on how to um, how to debug your application. So I'm gonna uh, control S to save everything. And let's go once again, hopefully this time it's going to work perfectly well. I'm going to change my last name to Kinson the Tech Pro, the Tech Pro, and I'm gonna click on save and you can see it changes to the Tech Pro. All right, so we are done with editing and finally, finally, we need to work on delete. I'm gonna stop here. The nice part, we are going to be talking about how to delete uh, items using AngularJS. 
using Angular 9. And these, these lessons are making the actual independent. Uh, so you can actually start from anywhere uh, because they are actually broken down to the, to the, to the, uh, to the smallest uh, point. I'd like to thank you for being there. I'd like to encourage you to continue learning. If you have any challenges, I'm right here for you. Leave me a comment to let me know what challenge you have. And we are going to see in the next part.